Let's continue to imagine that we're working in a hospital and we want to track patients. And in the previous video, I said these patients are objects. And I meant by that we think of patients as things and objects are things. But I didn't mean that in the programming sense of the word. Object oriented programming is a whole new ball game. And we want to explore that here. And we'll start by talking about the class statement and attributes of an object. And the class statement provides a blueprint for creating objects or things. It says what objects in this particular class of objects possess in the way of attributes and what functions are tied to these objects. And we'll get into the functions in the next video. And for now, we'll just stick with the attributes or the data associated with objects. The template for a class statement is that we write the keyword class and then we provide some identifier that serves as the class name. Parentheses, we won't put anything in there and then a colon and then as indented code we provide the body of the class. Again, the blueprint that says what goes into objects that are in this class of objects. And we'll see in a bit the kinds of things that go into the body. And we'll start with a rather flawed implementation of a class of patients. And we'll improve on this just a bit. But again, we won't get into all the details of what makes for good object-oriented programming. With that said, to create this blueprint, we will write class. And let's call our class patient. And then as indented code, we will say a patient has a name. And let's just provide a default name. Let's go with Jane Doe. And then this patient has an age. Let's provide a default age. If we don't know better, let's just go with zero. And their malady, let's say, unless we're told otherwise, that they are healthy. And that's it. If we hit return twice, we've ended the indented code. We've ended the body of that class statement. And now we can start creating objects within our program in the program sense of what objects are that are patients. So to create a patient, we just write some valid identifier. Let's go with Gaga and assign to that whatever is returned when we give the class name followed by parentheses. OK, we didn't get any error there, but what do we have? Let's use the type function and check out what a Gaga is. And it tells us that this is coming from the class patient. And there's this underscore, underscore, main, underscore, underscore, dot. Let's not worry about that. Now the name, age, and malady, those are known as attributes of the object. And an important question is, how do we access those attributes? What we do is we give the object identifier, then we write a dot, and then we give the attribute. In this case, the dot is the access attribute operator. Or sometimes we'll call this the attribute operator, or we might call it just the access operator. Let's give an example of that. We could say print gaga dot name and there we see that Gaga's name is Jane Doe. Or we can print Gaga.age, and there we get 0. We can assign values to these attributes. So let's go with Gaga.name is equal to the string Lady Gaga. And Gaga.age will assign an integer value of 26. And Gaga.malady, let's go with swollen head. Now let's write a function to help us display or show one of these patient objects. And we can pass objects to functions as arguments the way we'd pass any other kind of data. So let's define a function. We'll call it show. And it takes an argument. We'll give the formal parameter name as patient. And then first statement, we will print the string name. And then the patient dot name. So we'll just get the name attribute and print that out. We'll print the string age and then get the age attribute for the patient. And then we'll print the string malady and then get the malady attribute for the patient. And that's the end of our function. So let's see how this works with Gaga. There it is. 
we see the name, age, and malady of the object Gaga. So this function works great, but it's just designed to work with patient objects. It's not a general function that we could use with just anything. So it would be nice if this function were only available to patient objects. And in fact, we can make it that way if we put the function definition in the class statement. And we'll show how to do that in the next video.